Welcome to Weddings Unveiled, the podcast designed to help you build a productive, profitable wedding or event business. Here's your host, Angela Profit. Hi, y'all. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Weddings Unveiled, professional tips and secrets on wedding planning and event design, where we take you behind the scenes of our past experiences in the industry and share with you what we have learned from them and how they have made us stronger. This podcast will help you grow a productive and profitable business to launch you into success within the hospitality industry. Before we get started today, I want to ask you something. Are you looking for the missing piece of the puzzle to grow your business? Well, I want to invite you to watch my free online training on how I went from hobbyist to celebrity wedding planner and how you can do it too. You will discover the puzzle pieces that will absolutely transform your business from hobbyist to like, hell yeah, I can do this full time. On puzzle piece one, I'm going to go all into personality. Puzzle piece two, how to keep the high quality clients happy. Puzzle piece three, I'm going to talk about what separates the good from the great. On four, best kept secrets to profitability and all about implementing the strategies. And five, If you're going to attract the best, come on, people, you got to be the best. And then I'm going to show you how to create the magic and put it all together for you and your clients. So don't wait another minute. Go on over to go.angelaprofit.com. That's go.angelaprofit, two F's and two T's, dot com. And watch my free videos and download my free workbooks that will take your business to the next level. Hi, y'all. It's Angela Prophet, and I'm back for another episode of Weddings Unveiled. Today, I'm super excited to talk with a very, very experienced, well-known friend, Peggy Kelly. Peggy Kelly. That's such a cute name, Peggy Kelly. <laughs> <Yep>. Boom, boom. <laughs> Peggy is the chief creative officer. I love that for this amazing, amazing show that you guys have to check out. It's called Late Night Bride. Hi, Peggy. Thank you for joining me today. Hi, Angela. Thanks for having me on. I'm so excited. Yay. I'm super excited because I know that in my audience, we have some brand new people and some seasoned people, and sometimes I have couples listening. So for, for people who don't know Peggy Kelly, tell us about your background. I came into the events uh, industry um, several decades ago, um, and I came out of the restaurant world. So I came from the food side of our business, and restaurants were always same place, same thing. And with catering and event production, it was beginning, middle, and new, and that was really exciting for me. And 12 years ago, I got married, as many of us do, and um, my now former husband said, you have to have your own business. And I said, no, I don't. I said, yes. He goes, yes, you do. And I said, no, I don't. And he goes, yes, you do. And I was like, okay, peace out. Um, That's hilarious. (laughs) So we launched Timeless Celebrations. Now, at that time, I'm more mature. I'm not a 20-something. Um, I won't tell you how old I am, but let's just say my hair is white, and uh, and I'm very proud of that. I'm on trend, finally. You uh, are gorgeous, and you have yes. a ton of experience to share, so I, I do. <laughs> um, so, you know, I designed and produced our wedding, and he said, you, you do this, and you love it. Let's, you know, this is what you need to be doing, and um, and that, you know, that was in 2006, and in 2008, as we all know, um, our economy had some shifts in it, and weddings were um, what were still standing. The best part about weddings is that is the story for me. I love telling a great story, a great love story, and having the experience in on the food side, in the rental side. I've literally done every single thing in this industry at some point in time. I started before cell phones. That'll give you a hint. 
<laughs> I, was, I was, you know, when we were out in a field building things, you know, uh, from scratch. And, and I love that because it, it stretches your creativity. Um, it keeps you very solution oriented. I am not hitting Google to figure out how to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and so I do a lot of mentorship to young people that are coming in who are living in the world of tech. And I'm like going, this is the world of heart. Come mm-hmm. with me, come with me. Let me show you how to get from your head to your heart and how to create from that standpoint of it. I love that. I didn't know that you came from the restaurant world. Um, Mm -hmm. So do you feel like going off of your background in terms of just customer service, um, do you feel like you got a very good foundation of understanding what customer service meant like from that restaurant world? Absolutely. Also etiquette. Um, You know, as a wedding planner, you're responsible for everything. So you may be hiring a caterer, but you have to ensure that they know what they're doing too. And I get heavily in on the food side of it. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'll go to, to the meetings and that because I want to, I, I know how to design a menu. I know about costing. So I'm a, a great negotiator with that. I understand service. So when they're setting tables, doing table service, the different styles of service, I can guide couples with that, um, give them some creative suggestions on how to maximize their food experience, um, you know, be more sensitive to it. And also from a timing and logistic standpoint, because I know what it takes to set something up and break it down. Also, how long is it really going to take to serve all those courses? Mm -hmm. You know, I want a five course meal. That's great. How much time have you got? Mm hmm. That's amazing. That's, that's so helpful. That's one of the things where um, the creativity and the planning and the logistics really blends together. Absolutely. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's so important. And I feel like a lot of planners who just plan and they don't have the creative side, they really have to lean on some of the chefs or the mm-hmm. catering team. And oftentimes I see when I'm doing consulting stuff in venues that that haven't in, I mean, this happened to me the other day when I was, I was in a different country doing some stuff and I'm like, wait guys, we have to back up. We all need to communicate here. Like how long is this really going to take? Like it's going to take me X amount of time to get the linens and the steam and then the floral designer and then the chairs have to come in. Like the, it's almost like the chef had no clue. Like he didn't right. even understand. And I'm like, I need the China flatware glassware down here. And he's like, wait, we don't need to be up here until five if we're serving at seven. And I'm like, no, no, you don't understand. Like the table has to be set because the photographer is coming at three. Right. So it's just all those little things that, you know, matter that until you really start to do it, you don't get it. Do you remember your first wedding and how you, how do you get from restaurants like into wedding planning? I actually, I was actually working at a restaurant. Um, there's a, a, a chain called the Hamburger Hamlet, uh, which is out here in LA. It has, has um, uh, kind of, uh, no, there's only one or two of them left because the, the owners have gone to the big party in the sky. But, mm. you know, back in the early 80s, it was the place to be. And um, the manager of that restaurant was doing a wedding at Waddle's Mansion, which is a historic mansion here in um, Hollywood up on top of the hills. It's just amazing. And it, as it turned out, it was also the place where I got married because of this Aww. first wedding. It was the very first place that I went and the wedding was for um, Gary Marshall's daughter at Disney. And, and I was so excited about it. And it was the first time that we did the load in and the load out, uh, the design of it, the service of it. And what, after that wedding, I said, this, when, I, when I get married, um, uh-huh. I said, I'm, I'm getting married here. And I did. Um, a lot of years later, from 82 to 2006, it, I was a little slow on the relationship world, but I was really great in the work world. So awesome. in night. 
1988, I got out of the restaurant business. And my first catering uh, adventure was at Walt Disney Studios. Really? Yeah. And what a great place to cut your teeth, right? You know, right. I, I walked in and the general manager there says, we've been waiting for you. And I go, I didn't know I was late. He goes, no, we've been waiting for you. Oh, and, that's amazing. And he took me under his wing and he taught me everything about catering, um, about buff buffet design, because there's an actual way to do it that is logistically sound and experientially sound from the guest perspective. Sometimes people design it aesthetically, but it's not functional. Yeah. And he always says, you know, build the buffet like you and, and take yourself through it so that, that you're not like ricochet rabbit all over the table holding up the line. And it was just, it was a great place to learn about lighting and sound and costuming and makeup and, and all of those things because, you know, weddings are a live uh, production. It is a live performance yep. and you only get one take. You yep. know, it's not like in the film world where you get cut, well, we shoot that. No, it's one take. Um, and the other thing is that in our industry, there are designers, there's planners, and there's coordinators. Exactly. And, and they are not the same thing. And I think that, that having clarity as to what you are in your skill set um, and, your, and your toolbox is important because designers will make it beautiful. They are not getting you down the aisle on time. They're just not, not interested. Coordinators, they're the lady with the checklist. They're the one that, that have the stopwatch, the checklist, and they have totally got you locked in but they may not be able to match colors well, or they may not have those nuance, those detailed nuances. And then the planner to me is the executive producer. And that's the one who is, who is the overarcher <coughs> of the production, but also has the purse strings. They, ha they have to manage the budget as well as to make sure that the designer designs on point, the coordinator gets everybody their own point but that it also comes in on budget. So when people say I'm a planner, I investigate that a little bit more to find out what is, you know, which piece of the puzzle, you know, do they lean towards and that, and do they really realize that they're also, you know, the executive producer of it? Because sometimes they don't know that. And they actually turn out being the coordinator. Out, yeah. out of it, which is, you know, important for clients to know too, you know, when they're booking them. Yeah, it's, and that's one of my like huge initiatives in our industry and in education is making sure couples and consumers understand the difference between mm -hmm. The coordinator, the designer, the if you're just consulting and, and directing and planning and um, you know and and I'm sure you get this too, but it's like oh well you don't need to be part of the ceremony because I have a church coordinator and it's like okay yeah. typically they're volunteers to, which is great especially for people who don't have planners and mm -hmm. have no direction but when you have a professional planner who's by your side for six, eight, 12, 15, 18 months you're planning, they should know pretty much everything going on. Mm -hmm. And it baffles me to show up at these rehearsals because even though when there's a church lady involved and typically it's Catholics, which I grew up Catholic, mm -hmm. um, and it's embarrassing the way that people are treated sometimes where mm -hmm. they're like, oh, well, you're just an outside planner and you don't know our religion and da 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 and the way they treat. And I'm like, lady, I'm not here to take your job. I'm here to answer any questions. I emailed you the timeline. I know that you're running the show. Um, but it baffles me when they start asking the bride all these questions. And I'm like, all of those answers are in your timeline if you would just read. Right. And so it's like, I'm, people think I'm like trying to start a war with them. I'm like, listen, I don't want your voluntary position. This is a full-time gig for me. This is my life. And I promise you that all of your answers are in there. So it just, again, these poor couples come in and they think that the church is going to take care of it when really they don't understand the big picture. So it's just very interesting. I don't know if you have any church lady stories you can share. <laughs> I do. Yeah. I always call it, um, 
uh, we're there to support. Yeah. But on, the, but on the same token, you know, and slightly control because it, because it can get out of hand. And I absolutely agree. Most people do not read. I don't, you know, because they figure I've done, uh, this is how we do it. The famous, we do it. And, and if you have designed anything that is slightly different, it goes into a tailspin. Oh, totally. Yeah. And, you know, <clears throat> in Pasadena, where I'm at, um, California, we have a lot of historic uh, venues. So people tend to get married, do the ceremony and the reception in the venue. Um, but I did have a church wedding uh, this last year. Um, at the Catholic Church, and um, and it was what we would call very lovingly a helping hands wedding. We all know those. That's mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. relatives all have a part in it until they don't have a part in it, mm-hmm. <laughs> and, it and and they check in check out on their time, not yours. Mm-hmm. Uh, and sometimes they let you know, and sometimes <laughs> not. where'd he go? I have no idea. Yeah. Um, and the ladies, they can be a little bristly. They can be a little bristly. And you're okay. saying that nicely. Um, and what I always do is I go ahead uh, before the couples, you know, even before the rehearsal and go and meet with them so that we kind of have a little sit down and say, you know, we're the team. Mm-hmm. And, um, and that seemed to work um, with this one. Uh, on it, and because I knew that I was going to have my ha- my hands full with the helping hands division, that I needed the, the the ladies of the house to have my back, and they did. They they took the front the front end of it, and I did the hurting from behind. And together we kind of met in the middle, and um, it was very sweet. And it was very sweet, and you could feel the warmth in it, which was nice. And you know, and we would just do it through eye contact. You know, you got it, I got it, you got it. You got it. Okay, fine. And then if somebody went rogue, you know, which was usually a relative, <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> you know, that, 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 that we could just kind of herd them back in. Yeah. Uh, but it was good. That's yeah, amazing. It, what it, a great it, idea. Meet ahead of time. Meet ahead of time. Set yeah. expectations. I love that. Enroll them. I, I, what I do is I enroll people into it. Um, yeah. And tell them, I, I said, A, I've got your back. And, um, and I'm here for your success. Yeah. I mean, we're all, hello people. We are all working for the same goal here. Right. Right. (laughs) Seriously. So even like aside from all the wedding planning stuff that you have been doing for a very long time, you launch something called Late Night Bride. So I want to, um, I want you to talk about that, let our listeners know about it, why you did it, what it's about and why you're so passionate about late night Brad. Because I think I saw you at Wedding in VA and we were talking and yeah. I'm like, you have to come on the podcast and like tell people about the show because I think this is amazing. And you, t- you shared a story with me at Wedding in B- MBA about why you started it and did it. So I want you to share that with our listeners too. I'm a late night girl. And that's from being in the, club, the restaurant and club business and the event world. You know, my best time is 10 at night until 2 in the morning. Amen, sister. Because <laughs> it's quiet. Mm-hmm. And, um, and you think no one's going to email you back, except in my world, and they still do. Uh, so one night, I got an email at 11 o'clock at night uh, from a young lady named Debbie. And the email said, I just got engaged and I'm all stressed out. What do I do? Mm -hmm. And my heart broke. My heart broke. I'm like, it's 11 uh, 11 o'clock at night. What are you doing? Um, And and I'm silly enough, I email her back. (laughs) Because they're so excited. Because my heart's breaking for her and I want her to be in her engagement. This is, this is the happiest, you know, theoretically, it's the happiest day of her life. Her, her beloved has asked, uh, you know, asked her to marry him and she's all stressed out. And what, what got me is I said, our industry is a $58 billion a year industry. It's a gorilla. It's King Kong. And so with that, she had gone down the proverbial uh, rabbit hole with it. 
thinking that everything had to be done in that moment. And I said, what can I do so that she stays in her engagement? So I emailed her back and I, I said, first of all, congratulations. Second of all, go to bed. <laughs> exactly. Went straight for it. Go to bed. And I said, and tomorrow, go on a really great date with your beloved and be in your engagement and don't worry about a thing. We've got you. And she didn't email me back. And that's when my heart really started to hurt because I realized that she had stepped into that vortex, mm -hmm. vortex of online research, um, spin, all of these things. And my head goes, what can I do to help them? And, and I don't know, late night, you know, I figured late night and then I figured late night bride. And I was like, okay, I got it. And I held on to that concept and I, and I tried to say, how can I deliver this? And I created it. And being a creative, we immediately go to, let me get the logo and I'll get the signage and I'll get the domain. And I looked up the domain name and I was like, on it, you know, because I'm, I'm just, <laughs> I love I'm, it. I'm, I'm a woman on a mission. I'm going to save every couple on the earth so that they stay, you know, there's a time and a place for online. It's not in the first 24 hours of your engagement. Probably not the first week, maybe not even the first month. You know, there's a reason it's called engagement. To right. Be together, to be engaged. You know, there's a shift that happens in your relationship, you know, from, you know, dating, committed to engaged, from yes to I do. It's, it's a journey and it's an important journey. And I believe that how you plan your wedding is how you build your marriage. And because all of the skills that you're going to use planning your wedding from collaboration, negotiation, compromise, um, all of these tools, uh, and they're all relationship tools, basic relationship tools, you're going to use in building your marriage. So how do I get people, here again, out of your head and into your heart, out of task and into your relationship? And that's when Late Night Bride came into being. And it took a while to find, because I really wanted it to be a talk show, you know, because I just thought, oh my goodness, there's just too many great stories. There's just too many people that we can talk with, like yourself, you know, that, you know, it, I know we're across uh, the, the country from each other, but you come out this way. I want to go, I want to take it on the road. I totally want to take it on the road. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and go to different places because each part of our country do have really great uh, flavors in the, in the wedding celebrations and that are genuinely unique to the different regions of our country. But, you know, I figured let's get vendors, real vendors, you know, whether it's entertainment, catering, lighting, you know, floral, rental, and let's get them talking to our couples so that we can, so that the couples could exhale and say, oh, I get this now. Because, you know, couples think that they can do it themselves and they take on this huge task. And it's not even a task. It, it, it's, in our case, it's an honor to do it. Mm -hmm. um, for them, because it's unfamiliar, it takes a lot of time. And I tell people, I said, do you have two to 400 hours that you you know, don't have anything to do with it. And, you know, because that's what weddings take or more, depending on the level of complexity and how many days you're going to be doing them. And that's not a good day. And uh, so I shopped it with my video friends and said, how much would it take to produce this? And they gave me a number that I fainted with. And then I said, oh, no, <laughs> that's not going to work. Um, but I'm a true believer that when it's right and it's ready, um, the messenger will appear. And so I was at a networking uh, event and these two gentlemen were talking about public access. And I'm like, what is that? And they go, it's a television station here in Pasadena where you can bring, bring and produce content. Here's the keyword for free. Um, and so check out your public access stations if you want to do something for free. Um, because they need content. So I said, I've got these two ideas. I'm going to come down and pitch it. And I did. And they loved uh, Late Night Bride. Uh, the other one was Peggy Kelly Presents Love, Life, and Business. 
They said, mm, that sounds like a regular show. Late Night Bride sounds cool. So we started and, um, and we put together, you know, I enrolled my rental company, uh, MTV Rentals, who I love, uh, to help me dress the set. We brought in a planner. We brought in uh, people who were DJs and, and uh, live entertainment people, officiants, uh, video people. Um, uh, you know John Goolsby from Godfather Films, I'm sure. I do. He was on it. He was great. He was great. Uh, so we did one show about um, film and, and, uh, and photo. So we had uh, just a fabulous uh, photography couple, Mickey and Sonia Photography, out here uh, talking about the photo uh, experience. And then John talked about video and the importance of it. And, um, and just a little side note, uh, for, for couples who are listening, please do video. Even if it's yes. just, just for the ceremony. Because you have to understand your bride and many of the people are not going to see anything until they go down the aisle. And you don't want to miss it. You don't want to miss the real, the backstory of all of it. Um, and then because you're in the ceremony and, and saying your vows, you want to go back and you want to listen and experience that. Um, the reception is great if you can add that into, but I just, my heart always says, please, please, please do the ceremony piece on it and, and hold that dear. Um, so, so we're still in production. Yeah. Uh, we start our next season in January. Okay. And, um, and this year what we're doing is we're taking an actual couple. What I'm, um, I'm still an active wedding planner and, um, uh, we're taking one of my couples who are getting married at the Wiltern Theater here, which is a very historic theater here in, um, in L.A., and we're taking them through their planning process from the bridal stand, from the couple standpoint. So we'll still have the vendors and, and resources on the show. Um, we're doing it in, in collaboration with the couple. And then they have five segments that they're doing from – their save the date and engagement shoot and, and that piece through couture, um, catering and design, and then um, actual production. And then we're going to swing it back around after their wedding, which is August 31st, and do a wrap-up show. And, you know, so that couples can get experiences from real couples, too. Because, you know, the vendors that, you know, we talk vendor speak, um, we need to really talk couple speak too and get them involved in it. So, and I'm open to suggestions. I want to know what people want to know about. You know, there is a Facebook page for late night bride and late night night is spelled N I T E. So it's late night N I T E bride uh, on Facebook. Um, it's also on YouTube. So you can see the shows um, on there. I really want to know what couples and vendors and anyone wants to talk about. I want to know what's keeping you up at night so that, uh, you know, and, or online or, you know, concerning to you, or do you do, some people have questions about etiquette. Some people have questions about what do I do if this happens, you know, uh, and even if it's relationship questions, because we do have um, relationship coaches that we're, we're adding in this year because, you know, the engagement time is an emotional time. There's a lot of dynamics that come up. Um, and I'm sure you've had some, uh, some exciting moments. Of whether <laughs> yeah, they're, of course. Whether they're family dynamics, couple dynamics, or uh, business dynamics. Um, and so we want to we talk through those too, you know, because it's, it's, it's all part of it. It's all part of it. Yeah, so some of the guests that you have previously had and um, what what have they shared with your audience and how has that added value to the show? They talk in real time. Um, uh, Charlie Isabella King is a planner, uh, Bluebell Events. You know, we talked about uh, being realistic about vision, not about the vision part, but what it takes to create it. You know, in the world of Pinterest, um, much of that, it, much of it, I can't say all of it, but I would say 90% of it is styled, are stylized shoots. And so 
that shoot took eight hours or 10 hours to do meticulously um, over time. And so, and when a bride brings that to their planner, they say, I want this. And then when they find out either how much it costs or how much time it takes, you know, it's things like that uh, kind of, I hate to say getting a reality check, but it's kind of like getting a reality check on it. Um, with John, it was about talking about the value of video and, and maybe not thinking about it as, as a luxury, but also as your legacy, you know, because with video, many times guests will be there that may be more mature, like your grandparents or your great aunts or whatever, and you get to see them and you get to hear them. And we're not all going to be on this planet forever. I'm, I'm staying forever. I'm sure you are too, but <laughs> absolutely. I, I'm in for the long haul. Uh, but, you know, to have that captured, and it's different to hear a person's voice than it is to see their image. Now, there's amazing photography that is done all day long. My hat's off to them. But there's just something about a voice and a look and a, and a sparkle in an eye um, of someone that has been in your life, all of your life, that you want to hold on to. And he, you know, because it's not just for the couple. It's for the families. It's for their kids, for their grandkids to see their life. And I think that was an important piece that he brought. Um, uh, Clint Huff, I think you know Clint. Remember Clint? I do. He's been on the podcast before. Yeah, he's a jewel. He was. He was. My, he was my officiant. We talked about ceremony, and um, and how to create it uniquely you, and uh, and that really the sky's the limit. There, there are a few things that you do possibly need to do a vow or two, maybe a, a pronouncement. Other than that, you can be as creative as you want. Um, unless you're doing it in church, and then they do, they really do have structure on that. Um, I think they have a rule book <laughs> when you go. It's when you really get, thick. Uh, yeah, yeah. There's a rule if you if you're doing a church ceremony, just know there's a rule book. You can add a few things, um, but you may not be able to add all of the things on that. Um, so, what would you say? Um, you know, there there's a lot of broad shows out there, and a lot of couple, and a lot of just. As you and I know, I don't know what you call it, but I call it trash <laughs> and I call it like just drama. And like you said, with photo shoots, it, it doesn't set the correct expectation right. of what that's one of the reasons like I will I'm very, very, very selective in doing photo shoots. And I enjoy doing them as I'm able to get content and do a lot of video and educate people. And that's really my passion behind even doing it. It's mm -hmm. not even about the revenue of it. It is about educating people to make my job easier. So when they come in and they show those Pinterest pictures, it's like, okay, I would love to do that for you. However, I want to make sure that how much you want to allocate for this and how many, how much you want to allocate that. And they're like, huh? I, I mean, it just, it is, um, you know, Pinterest is a love hate and then so is TV so, <laughs> and then YouTube. And it's like, anybody can do it now. Like literally people roll out of bed and every day I think of my life, I, someone's like, have you heard of so-and-so? Have you heard? Of? And I'm like, there is a wedding planner or now designer, you know, popping up every day, which great. But I think like one in 500 actually make it 24 months in their business. But right. how is late night bride like that show unique and special and how does, I know it's real, but what would you say is unique about it as opposed to some of the other stuff that's out there? <laughs> Maybe I'm just naive. I don't watch a lot of it. I really don't. Um, I don't either. <laughs> I, a, I, you know, I'm respectful. Here's something that, that, that I think people, uh, couples need to know, uh, which is uh, there is no threshold of entrance into our industry yet. I, I, and with that, there's a lot of uh, quote unquote uh, planners that went down the aisle the week before that are now a planner. Uh, and so really researching who the messenger is, I think is important on it and um and i think for me it was 
having 30 years, I'll say it, 30 years in this business, um, for me, it, I'm required by my heart to give back. And, and because of have, growing up in this business during this time, I've seen, uh, I've lived through the evolution of it and the innovation of it. So I know where it comes from. What makes Late Night Bride different, and like I say, I, I, I don't know a lot that's out there. One of the things that, that really frustrates me, and this is on the TV side, it, it, it is all the quote-unquote scripted reality shows. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't know if we can swear online or not, but uh, yes. it's just... It's a it's it's a bitch fest. Yeah. And and here's the thing. It's scripted reality show. Mm-hmm. Um so is that real? Nope. Not no, uh, but hell no, people. Come on. It's for nope. your entertainment. Uh, it's it, it, yeah, it, it yeah, it, it, it it's 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 an entertainment feature. But everything that we do is based on fact and experience and actual. And, and we can prove it, which I think is different. We're not making it up. We, uh, we have resource for it. We have actual events for it. We have actual experience. We can point to it. So we have credibility at a, at a very high level of credibility um, because that's what I hold dear to me. Is it, my, my credibility and my integrity is everything for me and my reputation. Um, my name is known here in Pasadena and, and I've earned that, but I've earned that. And you've worked your ass off for it. I have, you know, I have. And, um, the other side of it is, is I have no agenda except to, um, to get people out of their heads and into their hearts and get them offline and into their engagements. Because the other thing about being a little bit more mature is I'm watching the digital age and the impact of the digital age and relationship and, um, and emotion and connection and all of those things. And I think more than ever, we're hungry for connection. And so the more we're offline, the more we're connected, the more we're online, we're disconnected. And, and there is such a thing as an emotional uh, abandonment that can happen during an engagement. And people won't, couples won't even realize that, that it's happening to them. And it's from, it's from the online time because they're not together. I don't know too many, some couples may search together or online, but even there, they, they're sitting next to each other, but they're looking at a screen and, and, and doing it that way. So I worry, my whole thing is about the emotional side of this and the connection side of this and the relationship side of it. The facts are the facts are the facts, you know, um, yep. but, but the other side are all the nuances of it. Yeah. And somebody's, it's just like we always say it's in the details. What late night bride is about is about it's in the heart details and it's about keeping you connected. Yes. It's, it, it needs to be entertaining. We want you to have fun with it. We want you to walk away with, with something that you can use. We also want you to exhale and say, me too. There's a whole nother world of me too. And where, you know, I get confused. Well, me too. I don't know how to write an invitation. I do. So let me show you. Um, I, you know, I'm not sure about budgeting. I've got that one wired. Let me show you. You know, there's a difference between budgeting and spending, a, a budget and a spending plan. Nobody ever talks about that. They just talk about what's your budget, what's your budget, what's your budget. You know, well, a budget is a number. A spending plan is the allocation of the uh, of that budget and based on priority. Amen. <laughs> and and people don't talk about that. So we're talking about things that uh, kind of like you know you talk about you know weddings unveiled, pulling back the veil and saying here's the real piece of it. Let's talk about your spending plan in there. And, and, and I get that, mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. look, um, what's that? And it's, it's like, here's your number. What's your three top priorities? Here, here, and here. Okay. 
you know, then this is where we're going to put those numbers, and then we're going to we're going to work the other numbers over here. And I, oh, okay. Because it's not what you budget for; it's what you're what what you're spending towards. And you know, so that's that's been, and, and we're still learning. Here's the other side of this. You know, when when you step out into something like this, and, and you, I'm sure you, you would agree with this. When when you try something new, it takes time to find your own feet. You know, I had an idea, and I had a heart-driven idea. I didn't know how to do it. I found people to help me. Sound like a wedding couple? I had an idea, found somebody to help me. Then I took their direction. Then I stepped into it, not knowing exactly what I was doing. I didn't wait to be perfect on it. I just stepped into it. And, and I'm still, to this day, working my way through it. And, and each show gets a little bit better. And content gets a little bit better, gets deeper and richer. The production value of it is. Because at the end of the day, it's not what we look like. It's what you take away from it. That's the most important to me on it. it. I love it. It's funny. I was at a conference years ago before I launched my first book. And the guy that was on stage speaking, he's like, he kind of said the same thing. He's like, guys, quit obsessing over the color. And, and I know some people who, I mean, I'm a perfectionist, but sure. I'm not a, an English grammar girl. Like I can tell stories all day long, but write a book. Nah, I, I don't know. And I did hire an editor, but he's like, just get it out there. It's more about the content and helping and quit worrying about is the cover perfect? Is my headshot perfect? Like stop overthinking it. It's going to help other people. And that's what you have to look at. And right. then he showed me some of the examples and like literally there was a guy, there were two that I was just like, are you effing kidding me? And one was like how to be a pimp. And that was a book. And like this guy had sold over a million copies. And I'm like, is this a joke or a gag like I don't know and then the other one that was a gag it was like how to please a woman mm -hmm. volume one and how to please a woman volume two and volume two is much thicker than volume one and when you opened it up it was just blank pages <laughs> like nothing was on the inside it would, and so he's like guys like these people are out there making money and so I'm like oh my god I've got to like start putting content out there and so one of the biggest things for me by doing that is just having the people come back to me and saying like, thank you. Mm -hmm. So are there, um, have you been getting feedback from like people in the industry or couples or mothers of the brides that have watched the show and they're like, oh my gosh, you taught me this. Like, thank you so much. Like, have you started to hear from people yet? Yes and no. And here's why. And I, and I will be honest about this. There's a piece of me that's shy. I know that's, that's really hard for people to, um, to embrace. But when I'm doing what I'm doing, I'm a hundred, hundred percent live. When, when I'm not, I tend to be a little bit quieter. And what my goal in 2019 is, is to come forth as me and to promote. I didn't promote late night bride at the level that I could have done it. And so I put together a marketing plan and, and um, what I would call a visibility plan um, for 2019. I wanted to get some shows in the can so that I had something to step out with. And that, because to, 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 to do, do one show or two shows and, and, and then do it, just didn't seem like it was enough to, because once, I'm a firm believer, once the, 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 the ball starts rolling, it rolls. And I know you know that. Mm -hmm. you know, on it. So it's like, I didn't want to come out half-baked. You know, the souffle had to rise. And so now I have eight shows in, in the can. I've got three, three shows that are still pending that are on final edits. So I feel that I have enough to really go forward and say, we're here on it. And then we're adding a podcast to it, you know, just like we're doing today. Yay! And, and that, and um, so that we can talk to people all over the country, um, 
to, to really bring in those different flavors and ideas and fun, you know, fun stories and all that. Um, and I want to really start bringing in couples on, on the podcast too, so that we can talk through some things and to do some actual coaching with them um, on podcasts to, to help as many people as possible. So I think in the, in the beginning phase of it, it was learning about production and, 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 and actually getting the actual show done. Now it's time to bring it to market. You know, it's kind of like I, I was writing the book and I put the cover on it and now I'm going to go publish it. It's the same thing with the show. I think that I needed to, to get enough behind me that I could, you know, send it out into the world and say, okay, let's go. And then to give me enough lead um, information, lead content out uh, so that, you know, as I produce more, then it, it just starts to roll. I, I didn't want to have to play catch up. I wanted to have, I wanted to front load it so that I was good to go on that. So that's where we are right now. Yeah, I would, for anyone listening that wants to do a show, a YouTube show, a podcast, anything like that, I can tell you just from personal experience that we always try to work ahead. We try to batch ahead. And I've learned just from myself and, and like you, Peggy, I'm still very active in planning things and designing things and teaching things and doing consulting and traveling. And I mean, we're busy. And so if it's not on the calendar, then it ain't going to happen. So really putting it on your calendar, committing and making sure that you're working ahead. So like, for example, with our podcast, with anything we do, we are always blocking at least one day a month to sit down, get it out, get everything edited, push it out and have it ready. Because the worst thing you can do is start something and right. then lose the consistency of the momentum. And then you're going to lose your audience. So, and, and that was my concern. And so that's yeah. why I, you know, there is a reason it's called a soft launch, a soft launch. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you want to kind of put your feet out there cause you got you have to get it up on YouTube to get it started. But I wasn't going to get noisy about it until I had enough to go. And then I, then I became willing to get no, uh, noisy about it. And you mentioned this already, but so for, the, for people listening out there, you know, if they wanted to be part of this show, do they have to come to L.A., to the studio yeah. that you're working with, or are you taking it on the road, or what are your plans for the next year with the show? And then I'll, and we'll talk about the podcast, too. Um, for the show, we, what we do is we film at Pasadena Media in Pasadena if you're in the Southern California area, and we would love to have you. Um, and re- we can also do call-in. Um, we, c- we can do Skype and, we can, uh, and, uh, and Facebook Live. We can do all of that into the studio, which was very cool. Um, so literally, it can be from anywhere. Um, would I like to take it out, out on the road? Yes. There, the nice thing about public access is there are affiliates all the way across our country in every you know, major city and some not so major cities and that. So I think based on my schedule, if I can put together kind of like a, a, a group of stops within a certain amount of area to kind of move it out more, I would love to do that. Um, with the podcast, I think that's the one that's really going to get me as far as far reaching as possible, as quickly as possible. So that, if, you know, because here again, go, go into the seasons, you know, January, January, February, March, people think that's the planning time for weddings. Well, that's a really busy time in Palm Springs. <laughs> so we talk to people in Palm Springs. We talk to people in Hawaii. We talk to people in, in, in different parts of the country. Then when spring starts to blossom, then we, we go, you know, uh, where spring is. And then summer, it's, and, and our seasons are different from East Coast to West Coast. And then in the fall time, there's nothing more exquisite, I think, than whether uh, being out on the East Coast, up in New Hampshire, Vermont, Maine, also in the Colorado, uh, Montana area. I mean, it's just stunning. Same thing at summertime, you know, especially up in Wyoming, Colorado, Montana. It's just they have some beautiful, beautiful locations that we can talk about. So it's uh, I'm learning, too, um, every day about what's out there and who's out there. It's a, the nice part, it's an open platform. So um, I want to talk about everything. 
I really do. There is nothing that I am not willing to talk about. You know, I love same sex weddings. I do them all the time. They have a big piece of my heart. I love, you know, second marriages in a big way. I'm working on number three. I'll be honest. Third time's you know, a charm. Third time's <laughs> a charm. You know, I know that there is great love uh, on its way to my life. And, uh, and I am open and willing to receive. You just have to be willing to uh, be active in your life. That is my only requirement. Have a really wicked sense of humor and, and, and be willing to be an active participant in life. You know, it's a little different at this stage of life. You know, people are retiring and I'm like doing, no, this is my third act. <laughs> Me and Jane Fonda are out here going, this is our third act. You know, we're like, we're going to take it all the way live. On air. And I think this is the greatest time of my life. And, you know, and I want to give it back. I so want to give it back. I want young people to know that love is real, that it lasts, that it takes work. Um, it's worth it. That, you know, planning is not stressful. It's not stressful. Things are around it, maybe. But we all have a choice. We have a choice as to how to, to, to show up for it. And, um, I tell you, I, I have a little passion. Can I talk, can I tell you about my passion project? Yes. Tell us. I, I have a little, it's not a little passion project. It's a big passion project. <laughs> um, we all know that, that we all have wedding stories and that, and you know, where we have the good days, the not so good days and stuff like that. But so I came up with this idea called wedding planning anonymous. And it's a 12-step program for the, wed for, for the wedding market. For couples, as well, and it could also be for professionals because we could probably use a meeting every once in a while, um, to have a place to go and just talk, just talk, um, to exhale with other uh, couples or, or brides or whatever. We can do it, um, you know, very similar to how they do it in, in, in the recovery community. And it, and it doesn't mean that there's any dysfunction about it. It isn't. It's all about community. Because sometimes you can't talk to your parents and sometimes you can't talk to your best friends and sometimes you can't. You just need someone to listen. And sometimes you need someone who's walked a step or two ahead of you to let you know that it's going to be okay or have an idea or solution because they faced what you're facing. And it tends to be in the arena of emotion and dynamic, you know, relationship dynamic. So that's something that I really have uh, felt strongly about for a really long time. And, you know, I, I tell people about it and they kind of giggle and it's like, mm, think about it, you know, didn't you want that one person to sit with you and just kind of just let you just talk and talk and talk and talk and talk with no judgment whatsoever and, and then, you know, be okay? And they go, yeah. I said, well, that's what this is about. Just a place to come be that's separate from, you know, all of the stuff that you're dealing with at home. Just step away for an hour. Come sit. Come hang out. Have a cup of tea. Talk. Don't talk, just be there, help somebody else. The best place we can, I don't know about you, but I love being of service. Don't you love being of service? Love it. Absolutely love it. Don't you feel better when you are? Absolutely. So if, you know, if you could go someplace and help somebody else out of their stuff, doesn't it help you out of your stuff? 100%. That's, so that's what it's about. It's brides helping brides, grooms helping grooms, couples helping couples, people helping people to, to go through this amazing time because it is an amazing time, but there may be a few bumps along the way or at least some interesting moments. We'll just put them under interesting moments. I like that. Uh, <laughs> I like that. So, well, so that's, that's amazing. So it's, you know, it's a little different, you know, and I figured, well, I've always wanted to be a little different on it. And we'll, see, and we'll see what happens. I'm going to test market, you know, LA, what better place to test mark something like this. Exactly. Um, and I'm putting it out there, you know, um, I, you know, I hate to say run a survey, but I'm going to throw it out on late night bride uh, on the Facebook page and say, would this be something that you would like? Is this something that would interest you? Would you attend something like this? Would you participate? If, if I get shut down and they say, are you out of your mind? 
you know, I'm not doing that, then okay. Um, but I'm, my hope is, is that because we're so hungry for connection and community that, that people will think, oh, that's an interesting idea. Let me go check it out and then see where it goes from there. Where do you find the time? Do you, do you calendar block? Like time on your calendar? <laughs> oh, sure, right. Um, <laughs> how do I find the time? Well, two things. A, I'm single, obviously. Uh, B, I, don't ha- I was not blessed with children. I have an amazing dog named Dudley Do Right, who is, who's my personal assistant and everything uh, assistant. Um, I have very understanding friends. And my family's in the big party in the sky. So um, I have time to commit to this kind of stuff. But the other thing is, is that I, need, I do need to, to time block more so that I can be more productive. Because, you know, time deading can really get the better of you when you don't manage your time. And when you want to, uh, to get projects done, they take more time than, than you think that they do. Yep. So um, I do. I do block out days just like you do. You know, uh, where this day is for this project, and this day is for this project, and this day is for this project on it. Um, and then I still am a late night girl, and I'm still online. You know, nine until midnight, one o'clock. Uh, David Tutera and I are our friends, and um, and we tend to email back and forth around midnight between mm-hmm. 11 and one in the, uh, in the morning. That is our best conversation time because it's quiet at his house and it's quiet at my house. And, um, and we just make each other giggle <laughs> about the fact that who lasts longest and who falls off first. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I love so, it. I love it. Well, I mean, with all the, projects and stuff. Like I know you said one of your goals coming up next year is to launch a podcast Mm -hmm. and, um, and that's awesome. But what are the challenges? I mean, I can already tell you, I mean, for me that my biggest challenge is time (laughs) and, um, and how to find time to do what I want. And so what, what is your like greatest challenge that you have been facing recently and, and what's challenging to you right now to keep moving forward, like with the show and the podcast and and your passion project? I think the big thing for me is partnership. Um, Finding people that are as committed as I am um, to move forward, um, to find, um, you know, I say collaborative partners, you know, you can't do this alone. And I've, and I've done so much of this alone. Um, I can tell you for Late Night Bride, I have uh, I have an associate producer. I have three film. I, I have three people on my team that are my cameramen, and and we're a solid team. That has saved my bacon hands down. Um, the podcast. I have a young lady that um, that uh, also does a podcast. She's kind of coaching me on this. Um, I've got it blocked out on my calendar already. Um, along with my filming dates for Late Night Bride, that because those are are, are being worked as a unit um, on it. Where I get challenged is is the um, <clears throat> excuse me the the actual events. You know, dropping in a wedding here, um, a gala there. You know that kind of stuff. You know, because you still need paid work in the middle of this. I'm not independently wealthy yet. Um, I love that yet yet. <laughs> I love it. Universe, just checking in to see how you're doing with that. Um, uh, so, you know, I have to be realistic about it, but I also don't have to be the Maytag repair woman on it either um, and, and die on the sword. So um, the same way that, that, you know, couples ask us to help and support them and to plan and to produce them, I am doing that. You know, I believe I fully believe in coaching. Um, I think it is, it is incredibly essential. Uh, Everyone needs a coach hands down. Um, I I really do. And, and more than ever um, because technology is moving so quickly. There's so many avenues that you need to, um, 
uh, be aware of, and, and there just isn't enough time in the day to do that. Unless you want to absolutely isolate yourself um, from everything else in your life. And, and I don't believe that we ever achieve balance. We achieve integration between personal and business. And what I've tried to do is look at it from that standpoint, because it, I am, would never say that I am balanced on any level. I, I skew towards work and service um, more than personal. Hence, I'm single, uh, but still looking for a really great date. Just letting you know. Uh, <laughs> I'm shameless. I'm keeping it open. Uh, I'm self-supporting. <laughs> I'm not a needy woman. That's, that's one thing. You know, people say, you know, uh, are you high maintenance? I said, mm, don't think so. I think I'm pretty simple. And they go, sure, right. Uh, have you, you just know at- what you want and what you don't want, most importantly. <laughs> right. You know, I'm, uh, there's two things that, that a friend of mine told me. He said, you need clarity and focus. Mm-hmm. I said, okay, I'm absolutely clear. I want to be in a relationship and I'm focused on getting it. He goes, good. I said, I'm absolutely clear that I'm here to be of service and, and to share my experience. And I'm absolutely focused through these, these uh, avenues to do that. So, um, yeah, time is, t- time is interesting. But the key is finding, like I say, partners or interns. There, there's something that I just found out, and, and um, this would work for you too. It's called uh, Gen, uh, G-E-N and then, uh, and then a capital M. And, and it's um, for marketing. And it is a service that matches marketing students to businesses. Ooh. For, for uh, and, and the students come they're three month blocks um, and they uh, where they come into you know work with you and your business and they have it all over the country um, I'll send you the link to it yeah and you pay a, like a, a, a monthly fee not I think it's a one time is it monthly fee I think it's a monthly fee and um, for and the the goal it's like an internship but these these are active students that are looking for experience in order to step out into into the job market so and you can hire them afterwards if if they're like the perfect you know the perfect storm for you and your business and um so i'm looking into that because where i'm at i'm right by pasadena city college caltech and the art center school of design so i've got three um educational institutions to pull from here plus um, a couple other colleges that have hospitality and, and, and that kind of stuff. So they're looking for businesses to, uh, to mentor and to intern and to get, and to get work experience with it. Um, so, you know, but people say, well, that takes more time to do that than it is to just do it yourself. Mm, it's not a good use of your time doing everything. Not, thank you. Key to management <laughs> is delegation, you know, but because just like you, you know, we are personal brands. We mm-hmm. need to make sure, we, we need to to make sure that that who is on our team is at the the same standard and depth and breadth as we are. You know, so we're training mini me's um, along the way, and then we can send them out into the world, and we know that that they will have a very full toolkit. You know, you have a very rich full toolkit that you bring everywhere you go. You know, and, and I was thrilled to meet you in person. I, I, I'd known of you and, and listened to you <laughs> and, and, and everything else for a long time. You know, we have a mutual friend with Marley and, and that. Uh, so I love how small our big industry is. Yeah. You know, there, it's kind of like this amazing oak tree that has all these different rings to it. And it just depends on what ring you're at. Um, in the industry as to who your circle of influence is. And we're in the same circle of influence in, in, in many respects. And, that, and I think what I love about the two of us is that we're so willing to share. Absolutely. Because That's my so favorite many, thing to do. <laughs> well, because a lot of people don't. They're like, you know, if I tell you, then, then you're going to know and you're going to take my client. I said, no, um, I am never going to take your client because your client isn't my client. Right, it's yours, and um, that whole competitive piece 
is exhausting and unnecessary. Um, but for some people, it's, it's their consciousness. And so, you know, we bless them and keep them moving forward on that. Um, exactly. But, you know, I will, I will share anything I have, any resource I have, any idea, because you're never going to do it the way I'm going to do it. Mm-hmm. And it's never going to look the way that, that mine's going to look. We, we can have the exact same box of tricks and, it, it, and they, will, they will absolutely turn out differently because you're bringing your spin to it and your experience and I'm bringing mine. So, um, you know, it's, it's a whole lot more fun to play together than separately. Right. right. Yeah. Well, Peggy, like this has been amazing. What, where can, where should everyone go to like watch the show, connect with you? I know it's a couple of different places. What's the easiest way to send people to the show? The easiest way, the show is actually on YouTube. So it, just go to YouTube and put Late Night Bride and it's L-A-T-E-N-I-T-E Bride and the shows will pop up. Um, on Facebook, it's Late Night Bride, same thing. Um, I, I'm not good at Twitter and Instagram yet. Well, I, I'll never be good at Twitter. Um, I just, just don't feel like that's really fair. It, the only person it, that's ever done Twitter good is Wedding Market News. Julie Alba, right. but the thing, the key thing was consistency. Right. And I don't know many other people in our industry who have done Twitter well. I, I think it depends on what on what your um, content is on that. And I just don't, I, I, I'm, Marley does Twitter like forever and she's good at it, but um, it's just, it's not my language. It's not. Mm-hmm. Um, Instagram, I need to get back on the ball. I kind of fell off the wagon. Um, so I'm starting back up on that. Pinterest, I ha- for Pinterest for me, you will see me as timeless celebrations because those are all my, that's my wedding world. Uh, where It's actually my wedding production on it is timeless celebrations. Um, that, so the Late Night Bride is all about the show and everything about that with, with um uh, fun facts and, and, and different things. Timeless Celebrations is the actual event that I, I design, produce, and it, so that you can see my work, so to speak, on that. So they kind of they feed together on it. So, but the conversation for me in 2019 is going to be at Late Night Bride. Love so come join, come join the conversation. Be in it. You know, ask questions. Tell us. My big thing is tell us what you need. Yeah. Tell us what, tell us what you want. Tell us what you need. Tell us where you're confused. Tell us where you have a question, you know, tell us how we can help because we can create content until the cows come home, but the cows aren't going to get here unless we know what the herd needs. Right. And, um, you know, I've created things over the years where I thought it's what somebody needed and they were like, uh, nice idea. Mm, no on it. Um, I have a, a, a program that I'm working on called Camp Bridal and, and, and it's a, uh, a multi-module uh, content program where you can either do it online or you can, I'm going to do a, a quarterly camp where you come for the day and we go th- and we literally plan your wedding from beginning to end. We go through each of the disciplines and, and, and get you through it as quickly as possible so you can go out and be engaged. Everything in my world is about how do I get you offline and back into your engagement, limit your planning, get you absolutely everything you want, and then go be in your relationship, go have fun. And the best thing about when you hire a full service planner is that you, do, you get to have fun and we'll do the work. That's but, awesome. if, but if you, if you want to participate, then come do it in partnership with us, get, get it done. And then, then go out and just go have the best time of your life because your engagement time is magical. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. Exactly. Thank you so much for all of your insight. This was awesome. Guys, be sure to go over and check out Peggy Kelly and be sure to tune in on YouTube to Late Night Brides. It is L-A-T-E and it's N-I-T-E Bride. Peggy, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, thank you, thank you. 
You're welcome. Be sure to tune in to Weddings Unveiled next week for all of the juicy details and interviews coming up. Y'all have a great day. Bye. 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 Take good care. If you found this podcast helpful, please share it with your friends. And I'm so very grateful if you will leave a review. Be sure you are a subscriber so you never, ever miss the juicy details of Weddings Unveiled. Also, be sure that you're a part of my email list, and if not, you can sign up at AngelaProfit.com where I share valuable resources and exclusive products with only my subscribers. Before I go, I want to ask you, if you have a story or a product to share with the wedding and event industry, please let me know. To be considered as a guest on Weddings Unveiled, visit AngelaProfit.com and submit a podcast guest form. Until next time, remember to stay productive and profitable. You've been listening to Weddings Unveiled with Angela Profit. Join us next time for more insights to help you build a productive, profitable wedding or event business. For more great resources, head over to AngelaProfit.com.